Today, well, it's shown in a documentary style video on my life, pretty much down the life. So, um, yeah, I'm Ben, I'm 18 years old. You can call me an influencer at this point. I've got over 350,000 followers on all platforms and um, do a bit of boxing here and there. Just gonna give it a day in the life of me and see what goes down. Tell us when you got into boxing. I was in sixth class in school and um, there was like a boxing program. So I ended up jumping into that. Started training and ultimately I just thought I had like a natural skill for it. Ended up then joining the club, but I was playing football at the same time, juggling between football and boxing. Got to the age of about 14 where I then quit football and went straight into boxing and um, ended up becoming eight time Dublin champion, Leinster champion. I ended up going to Canada and like all places around the world boxing, so yeah. And then I stopped when I was 16 and I ended up getting an injury. I, got, I ended up breaking my ankle. I was out training for about three months. But um, when that happened, I, I think it was like a blessing in disguise because at the time I was depressed over it and I couldn't train, obviously. So I ended up losing all my motivation for boxing, for football, everything. But with that, when I recovered, physio told me to go to the gym. I ended up going to the gym then and this is where I am now. So that injury was basically a saviour. I ended up bringing me to the gym. And from that, into TikTok, into Instagram, into content creation. All through the gym, I ended up getting the confidence from that, you know, so. How did you end up specifically getting into TikTok? So yeah, I was just messing around with it at the start there. I think during the lockdown, everybody was messing about on it. Summer 2021, I ended up posting a video of me and my ma. I put creatine into a little baggie, said it was cocaine, 20 million views ago. That kind of just took off, so I pulled me, got over like 100k followers from that video, and from there, just kept bouncing up and up and up. So yeah, that's how I kind of got going on TikTok, messing about, made a video, went viral, and yeah, from there. Just kept going with it, you know. How is it being a TikToker in Ireland? How is it? Yeah, it's good. Like it's yeah, obviously you have a name. So when I'm walking around town or I'm at a festival, constantly just people come to me and they're saying hello, ask for a picture. But like, what I like most about it is I've actually inspired a few people. That was my whole goal with this was to inspire people more. Even when I'm out and somebody comes up to me and says, "Listen, I got into the gym because you you inspired me." Like that is proper. Like my whole purpose was that. So when I feel like that's paying off now, and people are telling me that I've inspired them. It's, it makes it all worth it, you know? All the hard work. What keeps you motivated in the gym? Motivated in the gym? I always say this, motivation is temporary. You can get it at the start, but listen, 10 days later, that could be gone. So you need to have discipline. Discipline of a motivation any day. So when I'm going to the gym and I don't feel it gone, where's my motivation? It's gone. It's discipline then to get up and get to the gym. It's all about that discipline. You need that drive. Like you can't really find discipline. It's all about having it. Again, you can't just, again, you can find motivation, you can wake up one morning and watch a fucking motivational video and next of all, you feel like Arnold Schwarzenegger, but you need to have discipline to get up, go to the gym and get it done, put all your effort into it. With me, it's just, everything needs to be 100%. Well, anything you do, social media, gym, football, boxing, it needs to be 100% always. Tell us where you grew up, how it was, where you grew up and what you think of the area. Yeah, it's a grand area. Um, it's, everything's close, town is close. The boxing clubs around here, there's gyms, Lewis Line, everything. So yeah, I loved growing up here. Um, the area's grand, there's an Astro for playing football. The boxing club around the corner, playground, everything. Yeah, so all the people around here are sound. I couldn't have asked to go up anywhere else, really. Like, I'd love to hear you. Does the community support you? Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I was, like, when I started my personal training business, and the shops were offering me to like, put posters up in the shops and stuff like that, so they helped me get a kickstart. And again, like everyone around here, like they all follow me on Instagram and TikTok, and I see them, they tell me how well I'm doing and shit like that, you know? Yeah, no, it's a great community, though, definitely. Yeah. Are you still in school? Am I still in school? No, I am not. I would have been finished this year, but I dropped out in fifth year, so I basically, I don't transition year. Kind of got a bit lazy from that when COVID came and shit, went in the fifth year. But at the time, I only started the gym. Just when I broke the angle, I started going to the gym. So I was literally, I fell in love with the gym. But didn't want to be in school, I just wanted to be in the gym or train and whatever. So basically what I thought was, school wasn't for me. I knew I wasn't going to go to college. I knew I didn't need the leaving cert, so I dropped out. Done a personal training course and finished instruction course. Got that done and went straight to working in the gym and started working online for myself. So again, that's my job now. I work for myself in the gym, training people, working with people online. Yeah, yeah, so like I only, I was 16 and I don't know what I wanted to be. But you'll find your path. I've gone to the gym through a, a weird way, like again, I broke a bone. I ended up going to the gym just to try rehab from there. That's when I found it, that that was my purpose, that was my passion, you know what I mean? I think that happened for a reason, again, when I broke my ankle, I thought it was the worst thing ever, I thought it was going to set me back, but it actually catapulted me. Something bad might happen to you in the future, but just think, listen, this happened for a reason. Something good's going to come out of it and could be your next career, your next path, you know? So yeah, I wake up every day, first thing I'll do is get up, Breakfast, supplements, can't forget about them, gym. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then uh, I'll normally start my day off with a few clients, so I'll go down to the gym, I'll get me work done down there, I'll be training people, 
and then after that is done I'll do my own training so I always make sure I get my own gym walking and then during the evenings then I'm back home I'm making I'm editing videos or I'm doing whatever you know what I mean it's, I'm always doing something whether it's training or editing videos or making videos recording shit and then obviously boxing as well now when I have an event coming up I'm constantly training um, in the evenings yeah so it's just I'm basically in the gym 24-7 ah, or I'm making videos yeah literally Yo. that's actually my skill there yeah, where I went to school primary yeah. so I literally live about, I live about 40 seconds away man and I still managed to be like some days <laughs> which is a fucking joke but um, yeah no, I went to school here there's astro pitches up there yeah. uh, playgrounds and everyone around here is just sounds like the community's quality everyone looks over each other supportive like even when I started my business, there's people are asking me to put up po my posters on the shops yeah, and the community centre and stuff like that, they're very, very helpful. Shout out to the Blue Bell Community Centre. They helped me out a lot in there. we making posters and promoting shit and stuff, you know? So yeah, I love, love living here. Were you a good student? Yeah, I was a good student, yeah. Um, got good grades in primary school. But then when I went to secondary school, again, I was still good. Yeah. But I never got in trouble, really, to be honest. I always taking part in sports oh, as well. I would say all A's now, but uh, <laughs> decent enough. But yeah. then I done fourth year, COVID came and I went a bit lazy. Again, when I sat in the house there, I just kind of fell in love with the gym and I knew that I didn't need school to do what I wanted to do. So yeah, I dropped out. I don't recommend it, but again, I, I was confident enough that I was able to drop out and still make a future for myself, you know? What would you say to yourself in first year? Yeah, what would I say to myself in first year? It's a good question. Um, I'd say back then I, I heard a lot of people talk about me. Like I used to like have ideas about making YouTube videos and stuff like that, and I'd back away from it because yeah. like I'd be I'd be too scared of what people taught me. But then as I grew older, I just got rid of that fear. And nowadays I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. I don't think everybody in the world should be like that because there's so many people that have potential that just won't do it because yeah. they care what people think. Yep. So yeah, that's my biggest advice. Don't care what people think about you. That's what I tell me me past self. What would the kids want to know? Not a good question, yeah. If we could tell any kids advice nowadays, it would be just put 100% effort into everything you do, whether it's sports, school, fucking TikTok, Instagram, just make sure you put everything into it because then it can't go wrong and be confident in yourself. And again, that last bit of advice I said, but not caring about what people think, that is the best advice I'd give because I reckon if we start this journey when I was in first year, like what you said, I'd be even bigger than what I am now. So I just wasted time really. So yeah, again, just don't care what people think, give everything 100% and be confident in yourself. Best thing to ever say. I want to give a shout out to my primary school teacher, Mr. Brett. He's actually uh, invited me down to Morn Road School today to do a talk to the sixth class students today. That's where I'm heading right now, so yeah, I'll see you all there. Just the main man now, the biggest inspiration. <laughs> the main man, he got me into boxing, got me into football, brought me everywhere, this fella. So, can't <laughs> fool me where I am today without him. <laughs> How much of the day would you spend on your phone? You know, actually, I only checked my screen time yesterday. It was um, eight hours. Let's. It's a bit long, isn't it? Like, I guess I, I walk off my phone. Everything I do to make money comes from my phone. Whether that's like getting a new client, getting a booking, making a TikTok, making an Instagram reel, for getting a brand deal and shit like that. So everything I walk, f like, I don't make money from comes from my phone, realistically. So, yeah, I guess eight hours a day is bad, but makes bread, doesn't it? <laughs> How, how was it? Um, you won the last fight, yeah? Yeah, yeah. So talk a bit about that. The last fight, yeah, with Conor Ryan. What a night. <laughs> I still can't believe it happened. Like, it was mad, but we got over a thousand tickets sold. We raised like five grand for charity. That was the main thing, it was over charity. It was for Shannon's Hoblin, it's um, Tien's Mental Health. So I'm actually, like, that's something that hit home for me because, again, when I was younger, I did have a bit of mental health issues. But um, yeah, I'm glad I got to do it for mental health, especially for teens. Like, it doesn't get talked about enough, which I think. It's really big, like, but um, yeah, I ended up winning the fight, and um, yeah, so I, was, I might be fighting again next Saturday, but the time this is out, I'll probably have fought already, or maybe it got cancelled. The event is cancelled at the moment, I'm trying to get it back together, hopefully it's back together now, I can actually get another fight going, but listen, we all know who, want, who I want next in the UK, we all know. Yeah, we're going back a few years now, um, I remember when Ben first came in, he, he was obviously playing football for years or whatever, and we... He came through the doors and we, we saw something about Ben um, where we kind of thought, you know, this guy's got something about him. Um, and it just progressed from there. He was turning up every week and training away. We got better, better. We, we started looking then at kind of titles that he could win. And I think we went on to win, was it, four Dublin leagues and four Dublin titles. And, uh, you know, the, when you look back at the calibre of the guys that, that actually beat Ben in Ireland, guys that were doing it a lot longer than him, the likes of Mick Stonehill and... Even Eccleston there, that's, that's Dylan Eccleston who's, who went on to win the, the Commonwealth Games there recently. It goes to show you the calibre of guys that, 
that were there that, that, that had to beat Ben, you know, you had to be really good to beat him. And uh, yeah, it's just been one hell of a journey now. This is the, this is the next chapter now. Yeah, so the last charity event we done, uh, it was me and Conor Ryan headlining. Um, madness, even thinking back, I can't really believe how well it went. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the charity we chose was Shannon's Hopeland. It focuses on teens and mental health. So again, this hit really hard for me because again, as I said in the house, back when I was um, 16, I got the injury, I was really depressed and shit like that. So, yeah, it was good to do it for teens mental health. I think I need to be spoke about a lot more, especially in Ireland. Um, so, yeah, and we're getting the W anyway, so, yeah, we need to go for another one, aren't we? Absolutely. So how do you keep Ben motivated? Again, yeah, we just kind of, you know, we look at what Ben comes to me with, whatever, you know, I've got, we're looking at a fight for a certain date, whatever. You know, he's obviously a naturally fit guy, especially with the line of work that he does. He's always around kind of gyms and that. He lives, he lives a good lifestyle, so... He kind of more so comes to me then for the boxing side of it. Um, I can accommodate him then. We'll, we'll set out a plan, say, right, what's the day? Right, let me see. Right, we'll do so much pad work, try to get the right sparring partners in, have a look at the opponent, see what kind of, you know, is he orthodox, southpaw, taller, smaller? And then we come up with a game plan, really, and just get in as much kind of work as we can and yeah. prepare, as always, like we always did, prepare the best we can, you know? That's the good quote. Fail to prepare, prepare to fail. That's it. Yeah, <laughs> Tell us kind of about the boxing club, when did it start? What your player position is in the boxing club? In terms of boxing club, this is as good as it gets in Ireland, you know, with the history obviously behind it. I think it was 1965 when this opened. Um, you know, we've had fabulous boxers here, even back as far, you know, Phil, Phil Sutcliffe Jr. even went away to the Olympics. He's up in Crumlin now, obviously has Conor McGregor there in some uh, capacity. Then you've got the great Paul Griffin here um, in, in 91, I think it was, he won the European gold medal. And then, of course, Michael, my own uncle here, who was an uh, Olympic gold champion in, in Barcelona, 92, you know. So that just goes to show you the pedigree that's here, you know what I mean, with Trimlin. And we're just continuing it on now and, and keep going and getting the kids in off the street, which is the main thing. And uh, just providing somewhere where they can go, especially in these cold nights, to come in, train, have a bit of discipline about them. and. We, we, we do our best with them that we can, you know. So there's a lot more champions still to come down the road. Are you fighting Ed Matthews or what? Listen, I call it Ed like five times. If you want to, you can have it, but for now, I keep trying hard. I don't think you want to, bro. I don't think you want to do that. He said it's barring me, but listen, we'll see what happens.